Hello, Dave here with RadiationHealthRisks.com. I appreciate you stopping by. In today's video, I wanted to do a review of this new meter I just recently found out about and ordered. Uh, it's called GQ EMF 390. And what uh, attracted me to this meter is I saw a couple of YouTube video uh, people review this meter and they referred to it as a 5G meter. And I thought, 5G meter? Because I, I don't know of any meter that, regi uh, that registers or reads uh, the frequencies of 5G. And so, anyway, I went on to, the, I looked up the meter and I went on to their website. And I'll show the screen really quick here. I'll read you some of this. In this paragraph here, um, oh, I guess it's about sentence four or five, it says, it, meaning the meter, can be used for EMF, meaning electric magnetic fields, electric fields, radio frequency radiation, and 5G network detection. And then it goes on to talk about it can work indoor, outdoor, and blah, blah, blah. So basically it says that it can be used for 5G network detection. To me, that's saying it reads 5G frequencies. But that's not what these guys are talking about. They're saying that this helps you uh, detect the 5G network. What does that mean? So let's throw up this article right here. Okay, this article is from a website called sdxcentral.com. Um, I'll put a link to this video, I mean to this article below this video. And in here it says, what is the 5G spectrum definition? And it says the 5G spectrum is a range of radio frequencies in the sub 6 gigahertz. So what that really means is in the 4G range. Um, sub 6 gigahertz range and the mi and so now that, so there's two groups they're talking about here and the millimeter wave frequency range that is from 24.25 gigahertz and above. Okay, so what this article is basically talking about is within what people think of when they when they use the phrase 5G network, like a 5G cellular network, there's two different groups of frequencies. There's the, the lower frequencies that are within what has been traditionally thought of as, as 4G frequencies. They don't use the exact same frequencies that are used in 4G systems, but they use frequencies from within that range. And then they jump up, the second group, is from 24 gigahertz and up to the, through the higher part of the microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And th those are the millimeter waves. Those are the waves that make it possible for the internet of things that carries massive amounts of data. And those are the ones that are more dangerous. And so what you gotta be careful of, this meter, the uh, GQ EMF 390, it will measure up to 10 gigahertz. That means it will uh, read the frequencies lower in the lower portion that are uh, from the tr from the traditionally thought of 4G range, but part of the 5G network. But it won't read the higher millimeter uh, waves. Okay, so why does this matter? It matters because when most people are looking for a 5G meter. They're, it, they're not looking for a meter to read the lower waves. They're looking for a meter to re, read the higher millimeter waves. That's what they're concerned about. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between 5G frequencies and the frequencies used in a 5G network, like a 5G cellular network. For example, if you go to the scientific studies page of my website, radiationhealthrisks.com, there's videos there from scientists that spent their whole career studying microwave radiation. I linked to a whole bunch of studies on that from different scientists and different labs on uh, this radiation, 5G radiation. And then I also linked to, uh, there's over 250 scientists that wrote letters to different governments warning about the dangers of 5G radiation. And whenever you read any of this or they, and they talk about 5G or 5G radiation, what they're talking about is the millimeter waves, the 24 gigahertz and above. So I just want you to be clear and understand exactly, you know, what this meter will read and, and what it's good for. 
Does it tech, detect uh, 5G networks? Absolutely. But what it reads, what it's able to pick up, it, it, it reads up to 10 uh, gigahertz frequency, which means it picks up all the lower frequencies from the 4G range that the 5G networks use. The only time you would ever need a me meter that reads the higher 5G frequencies um, would be if they ever come out with a, a device, which is very possible, that just uses one of the higher frequencies. Like say they came out with a Wi-Fi device that just used 30 gigahertz, for example. Well, if it didn't emit any of the lower frequencies, this meter wouldn't pick it up. So you'd need a meter th at that time that would read the higher frequencies. But for right now, I don't know of any devices that emit the higher uh, frequencies that don't also emit the lower frequencies. Now, when this meter came, one thing that I liked was they sent this little case here that you can put the meter in, kind of a protection case, so that it doesn't get damaged. I like that. It has a little belt loop there, so you can put it on your belt when you're carrying it around. So that was kind of cool. And then they... Uh, didn't really have any instructions for how to run it. You have to, I guess, already know how to run one. Um, most of them come with a little instruction sheet in there, but this one didn't. But they have this little card here that just shows different types of, of, uh, of EMF radiation devices. And then on the back, it uh, shows basically... Uh, what is their recommendations for the safety limits that you want to, you know, get different types of EMA, EMF radiation down to. So I thought that was kind of nifty. I will put a link, by the way, below this video as to where you can purchase this meter. So let's get into testing this meter. Okay, here you are looking at my laptop, that uh, round sun looking glare thing is the light in the ceiling in my office that's behind me. I can't, I apologize for that. I can't really do anything about that. Um, but we should be able to have a good video here. So um, I want to show you uh, the different modes in this meter and how it reads. Now this is what they call the all-in-one mode. And what it means by that is, uh, and it changes by the way, from portrait to landscape, depending on how you're holding the meter. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, if, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, it's uh, RF radiation being read or measured in milliwatts per square meter. Top left-hand corner is electric fields. And to the right, it says mix there, but it's milligauss, so it's um, magnetic fields. Um, so I want to compare the RF radiation because on this laptop I have... I don't have it wired into the internet. I have it right now uh, so we can measure it using the Wi-Fi to get access to the internet. So we should have a fair amount of, there we got up to 42 on the RF reading. Um, we should have a fair amount of RF radiation uh, coming out of this thing. But the easiest way, I think, to measure RF with this, you can do it with the all-in-one mode, as you can see. There was 64 or something. But anyway, if you go to the menu and you scroll down to RF's, not RF Spectrum, sorry about that, RF Browser, um, then it has a nice little flashing light and a little beep, and it's the number's bigger. I just think this is an easier measurement for measuring our uh, easier screen, I mean. For measuring RF radiation. It's measuring it still in milliwatts um, and you got the peak down at the bottom milliwatts per square meter and so let's just kind of move it around for there was 40 something so anyway now let's compare that really quick uh, let's get it out of the out of that mode so it won't be noisy um, and then let's compare that to um, this now I want to talk briefly before we compare this this measures in microwatts per square meter whereas this meter here and if you've seen my past videos where I did a review on the tri field they measure in milliwatts per square meter let's pull a screenshot from my uh, from a Google search um, that I did on to compare microwatts per milliwatts um, per square meter 
So if you look at those, um, if you've got one microwatt per square meter, that's equal to 0 0.001 milliwatt per square meter. So that's how they relate to each other. So hopefully that will make sense and help you make sense of the different readings as you see them on the uh, these different meters. So let's turn this on. And this is measures up to 2,000 microwatts per square meter. And it'll do, it'll pick, there it maxed out the meter. There it maxed it out again. So, the one advantage that uh, I can tell right now that the, even though this is my favorite and I'm going to keep it my favorite, when I'm just trying to identify problems and protect it, having that directional feature is so awesome. But see how this keeps maxing out the meter a lot? What that tells me is that this meter uh, measures more um, than this meter does. In other words, it doesn't max out the meter. It'll it'll t it'll measure higher output than the uh, than the HF's 35C. Again, this is my favorite because it doesn't really you know when I know it's maxing out, I know I got a problem even if I don't know what the exact reading is. So, uh, but anyway, I shouldn't. T I just like that meter, but I, this is a good meter, obviously as well. So uh, let's try some of the other modes here. Let me turn off the the uh, HF35C. Okay, so now if we go down to uh, the menu and let's try the vertical. Oh, I'm going to have to hold this different. Okay, let's go down to the menu and let's try the vertical mode. Vertical mode is... Uh, Basically, just a uh, it's in, it's measuring milligauss, so measuring uh, magnetic fields. It's kind of cool. Um, and then if we go to the, another mode, it goes down to the table mode. Um, this one is uh, just at the top measuring electric fields, and at the bottom measuring uh, electric fields. At the top is measuring magnetic fields. Sorry. The bottom is measuring electric fields. And then if we go down to the EMF graphs, this again measures magnetic fields at the top, electric fields at the bottom, but it's just in a graph form. As you can see, as I move it around, the readings change. So that's kind of cool if you want to see it in a graph form. Um, by the way, you can hook this meter up and download the data onto a spreadsheet as well which is a nice feature. So um, let's go here and go down to the RF browser. We already tried out. That's where we're measuring the RF radiation. And then if we go, this is probably my favorite feature on this uh, meter. And that is, uh, this actually tells you the frequency that, of the radiation that it's picking up. And remember, this meter will, will pick up to 10 uh, gigahertz. But you can see it's picking up from a decibel minus 90 uh, of uh, millow millow milliwatts per square meter all the way up to 2.46 gigahertz um, is the range that it's picking up. I just think that's cool. I think this one screen is worth the price of the meter. I don't know what I would use it for. I just think it's cool <laughs> to be able. I don't have any other meter that will measure uh, the uh, actual frequency and tell me what it is that's coming out of the device. So I think just that one feature to me is worth uh, the price of the meter, which is only like 119 bucks or something, if I remember right. Uh, all by itself, multiple times over. So I really, I really like that. Uh, Trying to get out of that glare. But I really like that particular feature. That's really cool. So let's go back up to all-in-one mode. And we'll call it good. Okay, so what's my overall opinion of the GQ EMF390? I really like it. 
Um, I love the feature where it actually tells you what frequencies it's reading. I, I don't have any other meter that does that. I love that. I don't, again, I don't know what I'll use that for other than just my own curiosity. Uh, but anyway, I like it. Um, and then the uh, other thing is it doesn't max out as quick as my other, my HF35C. So it'll measure uh, higher amounts of RF radiation without maxing out the meter. I really like that. I've had this thing on for most of the day today, and it's still reading 100% on the battery. It's only got one little battery in it, so the batteries hold their charge really good. I like that. So with that, I hope this was helpful. I got, I hope um, you got some value out of it. Um, it's super, super important to have a meter that measures RF radiation and also a meter that measures dirty electricity. From my test here, I think this would be a great one to get. So, again, with that, thank you so much for watching the, the video. We'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you so much.